There we go. It means nothing. nothing. It means zero. It <laughs> means absolutely nothing. It means absolutely zero. I can't. At one nanogram percent, he might have been smoke. He might have smoked two hours ago, eight hours ago, or eight days ago. Uh, if he had bore a hundred, you'd say, well, he smoked in the last couple hours. And let's say it were a hundred. Would you rather run into the stoner on the couch or the guy hopped up on tequila? Which it's, would it be? It's never going to get into evidence to begin with because uh, unlike alcohol where you've got the studies and they show and they can correlate to 0 0.04, 0 0.08, things like that, um, they don't have the same kinds of studies in, with THC. Because it's so variable. Right, because it's so variable, because of the half-life, because of the way it metabolize, me, metabolizes. And, and plus, a judge is just never going to say it's coming in. Right. I mean, if this had been PCP uh, or something or crack or, and you had the metabolites of that, then it would be a different story. Let's say, let's say they did admit it. Uh, well, as an addiction, yeah, as addictionologist, if anything, it would mean to me that, and let me be clear about this, to me, it would mean that pro person would probably be less likely to be violent. Well, that's, probably, probably less likely, okay? <laughs> that's very number true. one, yeah, number one. Number two, that you, you could perhaps make a case that maybe he was in withdrawal from cannabis, which makes people kind of irritable. But here's the flip side, Mark. I don't know if you heard this. Jane Velesman reported this all day. Apparently, Zimmerman is Adderall on Adderall and Tamazepam. Yeah, that's the bigger story, and I don't know why that's not being reported. I, everything I've heard today has been the THC, and I had the same reaction you did. I was just laughing, so what? And I don't even think it's going to come in. And then I was just told this when I came into the studio. To me, that's a huge deal. Okay. And listen, let's be clear. This is an ABC report that these were prescribed Adderall and Tamazepam. I don't care if they are prescribed or not. These are medicines. Tamazepam can affect judgment. You can go into withdrawal during daytime. It can affect your judgment during daytime. Adderall is Adderall. a relative of amphetamine, and that is a drug of violence. That's, That's a drug of violence. Why is that not a massive story? That, to me, is a story because also, as a matter of course, a judge is going to admit that. I, okay. I would say, if I'm laying odds, that's coming into evidence. Interesting. Natalie Jackson, do you uh, have an opinion about what we're talking about out here in the studio? Well, I, I, I agree with you guys on that. Um, when we heard that about George Zimmerman's medical report, everyone was concerned about the injuries. And our question was, wait, he's on prescription drugs, Adderall and Tamazepam? That, we thought that was very important. Uh, listen. And, uh, and, 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 and unfortunately, the police department never, you know, took a blood test from him, though. So it, the, the importance of it, you know, is a little, it's diminished because of the police work that was done here. So, so in other words, there's no proof that those two chemicals, although they had been prescribed, were actually in his system at the time of the event. I, but n no, because they never did a toxicology oh, on him. Well, well then, I'm, that, then that, I temper then my statement that may not they meant that may not come in well i heard they took a urine toxicology screen in which case in most toxicology screens the benzodiazepine the tamazepam will show up it right but show i don't up. know that the adderall would adderall might as a stimulant it depends uh, what they but, test for it right. depends, it depends on what they that. test for and it also yeah. depends on the screening okay but this is listen guys that's a big deal let's say i can as an addictionologist they could call me up on the stand i would make a huge deal out of what Zimmerman was taking, and I would complete. And this is I'm unbiased. That's just simply the fact yeah. that the cannabis means nothing, zero. Yeah, the THC is more than meaningless. I mean, it really and, is. And it's complete already, red herring. And, and they doesn't, knew doesn't they, mean a thing. they knew he had he'd been caught with cannabis at school. Right, so, and, oh, right, oh, and yeah. he'd been suspended right. or whatever for that. So I don't know that that I don't even know why that's become such a big story today. It's beyond me. I think, Natalie, I, I think the injuries are a significant story, and I think that the toxicology, if there is some, and I just, we're still kind of trying to flesh that out, is also the other story. All right, let's take some calls. Susan in what? Texas. What? Oh, hang on, take a call, Natalie. Susan, go ahead. Okay. Hi, Dr. Drew. Susan. I just wanted to say thank you for your comments about Trayvon Martin's THC level, because my husband smoked pot every day, and he always had a job, he always provided for his family, and he never was angry or mean or anything. He was a sweet and happy guy. Well, let, let's be, I, you know, again, if I were up on the stand, I would say, you know, you can get irritable and nasty if you go long enough with heavy, heavy pot. But it, does that warrant uh, getting shot in the chest? I'm just asking. Well,